welcome back to the Crochet Crowder Sales my friends at Yarnspirations.com. This is the Spring Poncho. This is a Spring Mom and Me Poncho and we're going to concentrate on the baby size today. Up to one years of age this is what you see here on camera and uh, it is the smaller size of the two. The mother size matches this set as well and we also have a crochet diagram available to you. Once you get started on this pattern it's just a matter of uh, easy repeat just going over and over and over until you're satisfied which I have the information available on the pattern if you like that and then just tracing it with the colors that I have. The way that I designed this is that the mom and me poncho actually work together. They're considered a fashion poncho so they're actually at a length that's more fashion oriented than comfort but if you would like to make it bigger you can certainly do that but you will need more yarn if you do that. So what I did from the this is the adult version that you see here. So I used a bit of pink that is highlighting the border and then that pink ball then I used here on the baby and then see this purple? That's what I used from the leftover of the mom version. So that's what I did. So it's a five millimeter size H crochet hook. You notice that it's looking like it's transitioning because it is and this is Red Heart Super Saver in ombre and this here is light pink and the adult size version is called purple. Nice and simple. So let's take you to the diagram. Let's show you how to get started and then once we understand how we're gonna get our points the rest of it is just history and let's begin. Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. So here's my crochet diagram. It's available from the free download if you want it and what we need to do is create the interior ring and the interior ring here is a chaining of 56 and once we get that then we're going to then establish our points and the points will be uh, done on the second round. So the first round we're just gonna single crochet just to give ourselves a nice stable edge and then number two is when we're gonna start the fun work in order to get the point and then what you're going to notice is that the point when we go to join is using a half double crochet join to make it look nicer and then if you prefer to slip uh, chain two and a, sl a slip stitch that's up to you. That's your business and you can just follow it around and everything stays in sync. A sink. And so the pattern just continues to repeat until you're satisfied and then you just slam on an edging border of just um, some single crochets and that's what we're, our story is today. So let's begin our starting chain. So let's begin our starting chain. I'm gonna show you a little secret that will help you a lot and I need you to chain 56. So let's just do the first 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So once you have the 10 done I need you to take out the hook and I need you to go to the first one right here and just put it onto the hook. Make sure that this is not twisted in any weird way and then I need you to finish the remaining of the of the 56 that you need. So you already have 10 so you just continue. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Go all the way to 56 and meet me back here in just a moment and this is how you can do it so you don't get a twisted chain. Once you have your 56 on here then you're just gonna yarn over it and pull through that one plus the other one just slide it off and there is your neck ring like so and the chain is not twisted. Let's begin round number one. So starting up right where you are I need you to chain one and make sure that this chain is not twisted in any kind of weird way because it shouldn't be and you're just gonna turn over to the back hump of the chain work itself and that's where you're gonna begin your story. So you're gonna start in the same one that you did the join with and once you do the first one the chain will stay turned upside down and sometimes getting started is always a bit of a, a joy ride. <laughs> Okay, so I got the first one in. So I don't necessarily want to count but I will count at the end of the round to make sure that I have a total count of 56 because we had 56 change, uh, chains. There should be 56 of these single crochets going all the way around. So please do this all the way around and I will see you back here in a moment. So I'm coming all the way around. Just lay it flat. Make sure that it's not twisted so there's no, nothing is turned over. So make sure it looks flat and you were just going to join it with a slip stitch to the beginning and I already counted that there is confirmed to be 56. So let's begin 
a row number, a round number two and this is going to establish on our points and we need to count this round so that we can get ourselves established. The points will be at the top here and also completely the opposite on the other side and this will be the sides where it rests over the shoulders of the child. Let's begin round number two. You'll notice in the instructions that it states that a uh, uh, chaining of two does not count as a stitch. So we gotta make sure that it's just a filler, it makes it look better and I need you to just chain two. So just ignore that, that's nothing. And right where it's joined here is going to be the point. So you're only gonna do half of the point to start and then you're gonna zoom around and then you'll finish that point on the other side when you get there. So you're going to apply two double crochets into that same spot. It looks better if you do that chain two the way that I determined this. So now the next 27 stitches are each going to be a double crochet. So just start and count. So we'll just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. Now I am going to do it because I'm, I'm a little nervous for myself is that do not count the one that has the two double crochet in it but make sure that you do have 27. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Once you confirm 27, the next one is going to be the next point. So the points on this one is going to be two double crochet, chain two, and then two double crochet into the same one. Then you're gonna zoom across and there's 27 stitches left before you get to the, where you started. So if you wanna count it, you can just to verify that you are even. If it is off by one number, then it's gonna be a problem for you because the points will not line up. So just make sure that you just double crochet yourself all the way back to the very beginning and I'll see you back there in just a moment. So make sure there is 27. So I'm coming back around. I have the 27 in right where you started right here is where you're going to finish. So you need to apply two double crochets into there first. Okay, so there is going to create the point and you're going to use what is called as a half double crochet join and you're going to join it to the top of the first double crochet. So ignore that chain two. So wrap the hook going into the top, pull through and then pull through all three and this half double crochet the side of this stitch is going to be used as the chain two space. And so now we're going to continue to round number three and four. So three and four are going to be the repeats for the whole thing and let's show you how to do number three. So in row number three, the counting obsessively is kind of done for you. So you're just gonna chain two. That doesn't count as anything as we talked about and you're going to apply two double crochet into the same corner space. This is the point. Starting, don't include this chain two as anything because it's not starting in the first double crochet, you're just going to double crochet yourself all the way to the next point and I will see you there in just a moment. So I'll see you there in a moment as I just said. <laughs> so I'm coming up to the next point. So I'm going into the double crochet right before the point and in the point is what you already know. So it's two double crochet, chain two and two double crochet. 
So then you're starting on this side of the point. Just start in the first one. It's right there. And you're gonna double crochet yourself all the way back to the very beginning. And I'll meet you there and show you how to finish the point once again. This is still round number three. So I'm coming all the way back. I come into the last double crochet before the point. You wanna finish your point with a double crochet. You do that twice. So two double crochet and then a half double crochet to the beginning. So people email quite often and they say they want the stitch counts per round for the remaining of the project. You should know that every time you complete a round you're increasing the stitch count by eight. And so you will notice that we started off with 56 and then we continued along and then we went to 64. So that was an increase by eight and so then the next row goes to 72 and so on. So just grab your calculator and count the number of rows if you would like to know that information. I find with patterns if you provide way too much information people get really upset with how much paper you waste. So that is the increase. So if you need to figure that out it's always increasing by eight. Let's begin round number four. So let's begin number four. Chain two does not count as a double crochet does it? And you're going to apply two double crochet in. The texture is going to start immediately right from the very first stitch. Remember this chain two does not count as anything. So don't include that. Just ignore it and go into the first double crochet and it's going to be a front post double crochet. So just come in and pick it up and finish it. The next one is going to be a double crochet and you're alternating between these two stitches all the way to the next point. So the next one is Yes, a double uh, front post double crochet and the next one is a double. So just keep alternating and I will see you at the next point in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the next point. If your counts are right, the stitch before the point is a front post double crochet and that keeps in line with how you started. So the counts equal that. So then you'll do your point of two double crochet, chain two and two double crochet. And then you start on the other side of this point. First one out is and remember there's no chain two there so you don't have to worry about looking for that. So you just start with a front post double and then a double and keep alternating between the two stitches to take you all the way back to the home base at the beginning of your round. I'll be right, right <laughs> I'll be right back in just a moment. And coming all the way back around and again the last stitch before the point should be a front post double. If it's not something is wrong in your count. Okay, so you've done something wrong. So to do the final, you'll just put in your two double crochets into the point and then just half double crochet join to the top of the first double crochet. That's the chain two. Just ignore it and just go into the top of the first double crochet. So now you're going to repeat uh, rounds number three and four additional four more times. So you'll do three, four, three, four, three, four and three, four and then it's done. It's approximately around 10 inches from the neckline all the way down. Um, it's just uh, it's almost 10 inches and then you just have to apply the the borders on the tops and the bottoms. So when you do three and four. So let's talk about the repeat. So let's talk about the repeat. You're now going to apply three and four a total of four more times. So you will three, four, three, four, three, four and three, four. Once you have that done four times you need to repeat row number three in order to finish this thing. So right now we're currently sitting on number four. So in order to start row number three again you just chain up two. Just double crochet twice into the point and row number three if you recall is just a double crochet in each. So you just start with the first double crochet. Ignore that chain two and just continue to zip along on your corners. It's two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet and just continue all the way around. So when I come back after this round I am going to show you how to apply your borders uh, once you have your length done and it's a really nice easy pattern to do in front of the TV and it's a really fast product project to do as well considering it's for baby. I'll be right back in just a moment. So I'm coming back around on round number three again. So it's a repeat as we mentioned and you're just coming right to the end. Make sure you do plop in your two double crochet right into the point and then join it with a half double crochet join to the top of the first double crochet. So that's it. 
So once you get all your repeats done for your whole thing, the border is, or the edging is actually really quite easy. So let's cover the edging and I'll show you the bottom edge and then I'll show you top. If you would like to make your uh, border a different color, you can. You can just uh, fasten off and then just add new yarn. And uh, for those that wanna keep the same color, just chain up one. So if you're going to attach new color, just a slip stitch it, chain one, and apply three single crochets into the point. And that will allow it to continue to turn and keep it nice. Starting with the first double crochet, ignore that chain two, and you're just going to single crochet yourself all the way until you get to the next point. And that's where I'll pick you up in just a moment. If you would like to apply then in here, this is the other point. It's gonna be three single crochets to allow you to turn and then continue along in your journey just picking up from the next double crochet and single crochet yourself all the way back to the very beginning. And I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming all the way to where I started. I go into my last double crochet. The corner is already done so you don't have to add any more. Slip stitch it to the beginning one in the corner and this is where you're going to fasten off. So just trim your yarn and we still have the collar uh, edge to do if you wish. Turn it to the back side and just take that and just put it through a tapestry needle. Now I've been getting several complaints late, lately that people's uh, stuff is falling out. So re remember, remember that when you go in here you wanna split fiber fibers. If you just wiggle your way through stitch work and don't split fibers, it'll have a higher chance of falling out on you. So just pulling it through because it's gotta work its way between fibers and then not just between strands, right? Hopefully that makes sense. And the longer you drag it, the better it is, it won't fall out. So you have to go back and forth a total of three times. And then you can just safely cut that down. Now we have to go and do the collar trim if you would like to do this. So turn it to the right side, the good side's facing out. You will see this is a much smaller version. And I wanna start and we're just gonna apply a single crochet in each going all the way around so we don't wanna add any more stitches. So we're going to just do that next. So the collar trim. If it were me and I were you, I would consider starting on the same corner that you did all of your beginnings on. Okay, so make sure that you look for that. And if you're ever unsure, you can kind of see that this double or this chain two is kind of just standing there. So and this is where we fastened off anyway. So we know this this is the back. So I just want to just attach into any stitch. I'm gonna put the beginning straggler underneath the stitch. And all I'm just going to do is just start and just pull through and join it. And then just single crochet in. Now if I go over top of the stragglers, I don't, I won't have to weave that in. So just lay those on top of the line and continue around the collar of just single crochet. So you don't have to add or subtract, just follow it around and therefore that's the end of the journey. You will notice um, if you're looking carefully at the screen is that this is a slightly different shade because it's been transitioning. So because I have it at, at a different point of the ball, the collar is going to be a different color in this particular example. So continue to single crochet around. So I'm coming around the collar and I'm just single crocheting and then you're just going to join it to the very beginning single crochet when you get there. Okay and here I am. So just join it and then just use your tapestry needle. I've already shown you how to weave in your ends. So when you cut it and pull it through like that, I turn it to the inside. I weave the yarn back and forth a total of three times inside the fiber itself and therefore you'll end up with this baby size version. So obviously this is much smaller but your example will be textured and it will be awesome and this is another great day right here on the Crochet Crowd. We hope to see you again real soon in the future. Bye bye.